going on guys? Stefan, SNE's Garage. Today we, uh, we're going to be doing a little uh, brake upgrade on the uh, 2021 Cameron TRD. Uh, what we have here is the PowerStop Evolution Z23 drilled and slotted rotors uh, brake kit. I got two kits, front and rear. These larger ones are for the front rotors, smaller ones are for the back. I'm going to throw the part numbers for both of these kits down in the the uh, description below uh, so you know what you're getting. Um, just keep in mind that the front brake kit for this car is TRD Camry specific. The TRD Camry does have different brakes uh, in the front than the rest of the trim levels of the Camry. So we have the car right here. She's uh, sleeping in the garage getting some slumber. Now, the main reason that I'm doing this, there's one reason and one reason only that I want to upgrade my brakes, and that's these wheels right here. These factory brakes leave more brake dust than any car I have ever owned in the past, and um, it's probably because they are not a ceramic pad. They are likely a um, semi-metallic or possibly an organic brake pad. And they just leave a lot of dust. It gets all over the side of the car. It gets all. I gotta clean these wheels every time I drive the car, practically. Uh, so what we're gonna do? We're gonna do the front and the rear brakes, like I mentioned. And uh, there's a little cheat code you're gonna have to use to retract these rear calipers because they are um, electronic parking brakes. Uh, there's another YouTube channel that I highly recommend you watch, uh, Car Care Nut. He has a ton of great information on Toyotas, and I'm actually going to be using his video um, in order to retract my rear parking brakes. So um, if you haven't checked him out, check him out. He's great. I love his content, uh, and he's got a lot of good stuff. Uh, but with that being said, let's get this car set up on jack stands. Uh, we're going to do the front first and then the back, and uh, I'm going to set you up on the tripod and take you for a journey with me. Now, one other thing that I also got for this is for my calipers. I got these little TRD stickers. Um, these are high temperature stickers, and I'm going to be putting them on my front calipers. Uh, just to give the car an extra little uh, zing, I guess. So, we'll put them on too. And, uh, yeah. So, let's get the car set up. Let's get my compressor set up. And uh, we're going to get started. I have my torque wrench. We're going to torque these wheels down to spec. Uh, we're going to do everything the right way because especially with new rotors, you're going to want to torque the wheels down in a crisscross pattern and to specification because you can actually induce a brake vibration if you don't do that. So let's get started. All right, guys. So I just quickly wanted to go over some of the tools we're going to be using here. Uh, this is a snap-on torque wrench. You don't need to use a snap-on. You could use, you know, just the Harbor Freight. That's another one I have laying around. Um, but for this car, I'm going to, you know, use my good one. This is a very good torque wrench. And um, I, I don't know the torque spec offhand. I have to look it up. But it's probably in the neighborhood of between 80 and 100 foot-pounds. Uh, it's very important you torque your wheels, especially with new brakes. Uh, because if you do not torque them correctly in the correct sequence and to the correct rating... Um, you can cause deflection in the top hat of the rotors and that can actually lead to thickness variation and cause them to warp so this is very important. Up next we're going to be zipping the wheels off with an impact gun. They are 21 millimeter sockets and this is actually a specialty kit that I purchased from when I was in the dealership. This is a plastic coated um, socket so that it will not scratch the paint on your wheels when you use them. There is no metal that is actually going to contact the wheels. Um, so if you don't have something like this, I'm thinking about making an, an Amazon Affiliates page. So we'll see if the channel really takes off. I'm going to be putting stuff like that in there. Um, here we have our caliper compressor. This is what we're going to use to compress the calipers. Um, it is a ratcheting style. This works great. I have no problems with this one at all. I do have a couple of other ones. I just don't like them. The one of them is set up like a caulk gun. You squeeze it like a trigger. I just don't like it. And here we have our snap-on rubber mallet. Uh, we're going to be using that to knock these old rotors. I call them old. They have like 5,000 miles on them um, off of the hubs without damaging them because I am going to save these and keep them for if I ever need them down the road. 
uh, or if I ever sell the car, which I highly doubt I'm ever going to do. Um, but it's always good to keep your stock parts. Uh, so that's kind of where we're at here. It's getting a little late. I don't think I'm going to get to this tonight. I just kind of wanted to get everything together, uh, and I've done that. So it's going to be literally a split second for you, but tomorrow we're going to get this thing up on jack stands, like I said before, rip the wheels off and, and really get into it. Now if you guys want to take a peek in here, you'll see exactly what I mean about this brake dust. It is everywhere. It turns these red calipers damn near black. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our two caliper bolts off. And we're going to slip this caliper out of the way. I want to say they're 14 millimeters, but I've been wrong before. So let's, uh, let's check it out together. Let me go get some wrenches. Wouldn't you know, I was right. 14 millimeters. Let's... Break them loose. It should be relatively easy to break them loose. Okay, so we got that one loose. We got the other one loose. Let's get them out. Okay, this caliper will come right off. I'm actually going to get a rag and rest it on the rag because I do not want to scratch up my nice new red calipers. Let me go get a rag. All right, so we got our calipers set aside. We're gonna remove these return springs from these pads. We're gonna reuse them. I'm gonna reuse all the original equipment hardware. The car's only got 5,000 miles on it. There's nothing wrong with the hardware. So we're just gonna set these aside. We're gonna pull these pads off because we're gonna save them too. Like I said, 5,000 miles. These pads are literally brand new they just throw off so much dust that it's it's unheard of so let's just get these out we're gonna put them aside and now we're going to get what looks like a 17 millimeter and take our two caliper bracket bolts off really hard to do without scratching anything. All right, so that one's loose. Okay, we're gonna crack this bottom one loose. Uh, or are we? We're gonna go get another wrench here. We're gonna double it up. Ladies, if you're watching this and you see your husband doing this in the garage, run because it never usually ends well. Usually means he's got a bolt it's pretty well stuck and he's out of options. So we're gonna get it. That, there we go. Double wrench. And we're gonna take this caliper bracket off. I'm gonna take it outside and clean it up real nice with some brake clean. We're also going to get this rotor off. And there we go. 
Alright guys, we got our caliper bracket nice and clean. Hardware cleaned up about as good as we're going to get it. So we're just going to place this down right here. Careful not to scratch it. We're going to take this factory rotor off and we're going to go get our power stop drilled and slotted rotor. Alright, so this is our driver's front rotor as you can see from the sticker. So we're just going to mount this on the hub like so and we're going to just run one lug nut by hand onto the hub to hold this rotor in place while we replace our caliper bracket. So now we're going to go ahead get our caliper bracket Now I'm just going to go ahead and torque this down and I'm going to get these brake pads in. I'm going to show you how to put the brake pads in actually because there is a right way and wrong way to do it. Okay, so power stop, if you're watching this, shame on you. Uh, they did not include the squealers on the new pads, nor did they include them with the hardware. So what we need to do now is remove our squealers from the factory pads, which are these little guys right here. What these do is they warn you when your brake pads are low so you don't destroy the rotors. So we need to transfer them over. So I'm just going to pop them off with a flathead and put them onto the proper side on these pads. I'm just going to line two pads up, put them on the exact same spot. All right, guys, so we got our new pads on. The squealers are going to be mounted on the top on both the inboard and the outboard pad. You want the squealers to be on the leading edge of the rotor. So if the rotor is spinning counterclockwise going forward, you're gonna want it up top. So that's the way we're gonna do that. And we're also gonna pull this sticker off of the uh, rotor just so it doesn't create any uh, thickness variation in the way the hub seats on the, uh, the rotor. Uh, so our next step's gonna be to, to clean and compress this caliper. All right, we're going to slide our tool in here. First, we're going to open it all the way up because these, this caliper is already pretty much open because the pads are so new. There we go. All right, we're just going to compress it a little bit that we need. That should be it right there. We're gonna slide our tool out. We put our, our return springs into the brake pads. I kind of did that off camera because I almost completely forgot about them. You'll see them in here and here. So now we're gonna take our caliper and we're just gonna gently slide it back over our new carbon ceramic carbon fiber, excuse me, ceramic brake pads. And then we're going to tighten those two 14 millimeter bolts. So I actually have decals that I'm gonna be putting on these calipers. So off camera, I'm just gonna clean them off really well so that I don't have any adherence issues. So let me clean these off. We'll be right back with you. All right guys, and there you have it. We have our power stop drilled and slotted rotors with our carbon fiber ceramic low dust brake pads and a little uh, TRD sticker to jazz it up a little bit. We're gonna off camera do the other front one and then we'll get to the back. All right guys, so what we're gonna do now is put the rear parking brake into service mode so that we can compress the caliper. First thing you're going to do, this is for any Toyota with electronic parking brakes as far as I know. I do have a picture of the procedure that I'm going to snap in the video at some point, probably right now. But uh, the first thing you're going to do, you're going to turn your ignition on to the on position. You're going to put your foot on the brake, 
you're going to release the parking brake. Okay? You're going to turn your key back off. You're going to turn the key on, put your foot on the brake, and within eight seconds, you're going to go up three times, down three times, and you'll see the brake indicator start flashing really quick. So watch this. Ignition on, brake, one, two, three, one, two, three. You see my parking thing blinking, so now you're going to take off your foot off the brake, and you're going to press this down for five seconds. And you'll hear the parking brake motors back all the way out. And then you'll see your park indicator slowly blinking. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the key off. It is now in service mode. And uh, we're going to start working on the back. Alright guys, went ahead and took the wheel off. I unplugged my electronic parking brake, which was plugged in right here just so I know the wire isn't going to be in my way. And of course, now that I plugged it back in, it's gonna give me a hard time coming back out. That's just the way things are. So, okay, that is out. Um, we're gonna pull the two 14 millimeter bolts to flop this caliper over. Same way I did it on the other side, I'm gonna lay a rag down so it doesn't get scratched. Let me get this caliper off and then we're gonna work on the bracket. All right, caliper's off. Now to get to the bracket, I believe there's 17 millimeter bolts. Let's find out. All right guys, copper brackets off, rotors off. Just to give you an idea, you can still see the cross hatch in these rotors. So the back brakes on this car must really not be doing much because there's not a whole lot of dust back here either. All of my dust was up front. But let's get the uh, passenger rear drilled and slotted rotor and get it in. Rotors on, we're gonna put the caliper bracket back on, 17 millimeters, tighten them up. Then we're going to compress that uh, caliper, get the pads on, get the wheel on, move over to the other side. So for the rear pads, Power Stop was nice enough to include these squealers. Now, like I said, they are going to go on the leading edge. So on this fact, uh, on this wheel, you're going to want them on the bottom because as the wheel rotates forward, you want the squealer to contact the rotor first. So it is at the bottom. I'm going to slide it in. And then we're going to compress the caliper. All right, time to compress the caliper. Gonna be careful not to scratch it. Gonna flip it upside down. Put our tool in. And start ratcheting it out. And we'll see it's going to expand. It's going to compress the caliper. Like so. Okay, caliper's compressed. We're gonna get it on, get it together. All right guys, my camera died, so now I'm recording this on my cell phone. But I got everything together. I got my parking brake plugged back in. I got the caliper bolted back on. So now I'm gonna do the same exact thing on the other side. Uh, then when I'm done, I'm gonna show you how to take your parking brake out of service mode. All right guys, so we're back in the car now. Brake job's done. Uh, so now what we need to do is take our parking brakes out of service mode. So the first thing you're going to do is pump the brake pedal, build up pressure in that pedal because you did compress those calipers. You want to fill them back up with fluid before you uh, turn those motors on. So the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to turn our ignition to the on position. And you'll see that your parking brake warning light is still blinking. And you're going to take this lever and you're going to hold it up until you hear the parking brake motors actuate like that okay and that's it your parking brakes are uh, calibrated now your parking brake will work and uh, now we're gonna go take it for a ride and see how it is all right guys we took the car for a ride uh, we did the brake-in procedure on these uh, brakes I'm going to go over that in another video. I actually recorded that, so be on the lookout for that one. I just wanted to show you guys the finished product. If you look at the rotor, you'll see that there's a nice gray uh, finish on it. That is because we completed the brake-in procedure. The whole idea with that is to transfer a small layer of brake pad material um, onto the rotors. That's, that's the way PowerStop wants you to do it. So they look great behind the wheel. Our little TRD sticker, you know, makes it pop real nice. And uh, hopefully now we have a lot less brake dust. 
So please, hi, you see my reflection, what's up guys? Uh, thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, subscribe uh, if this video helped you. Uh, if you like the content, uh, trying to grow this channel. Hopefully we can get over a thousand subscribers and, and you know really start taking off. So awesome. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you later.